I don't say this much, but I want to say it today. Um, in Genesis, God said that it wasn't good for man to be alone. And so he took a rib and he gave him a woman to be his helpmate. And I thank God for my helpmate. I thank God for Sister Sherry. I, um, I'm amazed all the time. She, uh, she changes me, which is amazing. And I know you're excited about your wife, but it's my time. So. Amen. Thank God for her, and I thank God for what she does. And this morning, I want to keep you long. I know God has moved in mighty ways, but after the Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost, you know what Peter did? He got up and preached, amen, and he got up and told the Word, because now our hearts are open, right? I hope our hearts are clear in the Spirit. I'm not going to preach for three hours. You don't have to worry about that. I know lunch is coming up. Uh, but uh, just real quick, God has given me a Word, and, and as we were praying, He wanted me to give, continue to give the Word, and and I'm excited about what God is saying. If you have your Bibles, well, real quick, before you look at, before we look in the Bible, look at the person beside you and say, what's your bucket list song? All right, now look at the other person and ask him, what's your bucket list song? Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about a bucket list song this morning. If you have your Bibles, we're going to look to verses 25 through 35. And now this is uh, one of the songs that are written in Luke. Now, we've skipped one. We skipped the song of the angels. But if you come Christmas Eve, we'll talk about the song of the angels. Um, I told my wife we were going to talk about the angels. We are going to talk about fear not. And, 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 and then God, this morning, when I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning, he said, no, you're not. This is what you're going to talk about. And so we're going to let the Holy Spirit just run and move and go. But if you have your Bibles, Luke 2, verses 25 through 35, it says this. There was a man that, now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simon who was righteous and devoted. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went to the temple's courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simon took in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord. As you have promised, you may, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what he had said about him. And Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against. So that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. As we've been talking about these songs, I get excited. We talked about Mary and how Mary was going through a rough time, but she can still praise Jesus. And we said there's something about Mary that she can praise God no matter what she's going through. Then last week, we, we looked at another song uh, from Zechariah that taught us what the real reasons for Christmas is. And, and that is we have a word. God has given us a word. We have for, uh, a forgiveness from God and, and that he is our victory. And that's the reason why he gave us Jesus. Which leads us to this morning. I thank God for the movement of God that we had this morning. And, and I hope you don't take it for granted. Amen. Because God, the Holy Spirit, is trying to do something in our lives. And I don't know if we realize that. I think a lot of times we think salvation is just coming to God and asking Him to forgive us. But do you realize without the Holy Spirit, you would never come and ask for forgiveness to begin with? We need to seek for the Holy Spirit more. Now, I know we're a Pentecostal church, and some of you might say, well, Bobby's going to talk about speaking in tongues, all this. That stuff's great. But if we're not seeking the beginning of the Holy Spirit, none of that stuff even matters got to get to the point where we're seeking God first, no matter what. This morning, this song that this great man began to post was talking about how he just, now listen, you got to remember, he didn't have a Bible, amen, like we had. He didn't have church like we had. But he knew the Messiah was coming, and he understood because he was full of the Holy Spirit that God had told him that he would not die until he got to see the Messiah. Some of you should be shouting the glory because God wants you to see the Son of God. He wants you to feel the presence of God. He wants you to be saved so you can have a relationship with this Messiah that this man is talking about. Listen, church, the Holy Spirit wants you to meet. God. Amen. I love this as we begin to talk about 
this. This man we know a little bit about. We don't know where he's from. We don't know what his job was. We All that we know is that he was a good man. Not just a good man. He was a faithful man. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he was righteous. And he was a devout man. Which speaks of his personal walk with God. But the thing that I love the most about him is he was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. He was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? There's a lot of people filled with a lot of stuff. Amen. There's people filled with hate and anger. There's people filled with pride. There's people filled with grudge. There's people filled with, with all kinds of stuff. People filled uh, with, with all these sinful things, all these worldly things, all these things. But church, wouldn't it be great to be known as a man filled with the Holy Spirit? Or a woman filled with the Holy Spirit. A person filled that when God, they knew that God was on them no matter what. We don't have to know your job. We don't know, have to know where you're from. We don't have to know if you've got kids or not. All we need to know is, you are you full of the Holy Spirit? Because that's what this man was all about. That was his greatest quality. Amen. Church, I, I, I come to realize this. We need to start seeking God because God wants to do things in our lives, but until we start seeking his presence, then he can't do nothing. Right. We need to seek him. And this morning, I want to give you three things real, real quick on the reason why we should seek God. The first thing is this. Go ahead and go to that next slide. It brings a desire for a closer relationship with God. What are you desiring? Amen. What, what are you, because it's amazing, we desire a lot of stuff, isn't that great? I, I think about I, when, I, when I fell in love with, with my beautiful wife um, in eighth grade, amen. I desired to spend every moment with her. I'll never forget, we'd go to the high school football game. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You go to the high school football game, and it was just great to hold their hand, amen. And you'd hold their hand, and for some reason, you never watched the game. You just walked the track around and around and around and around. And I don't know why, I know why we were all so skinny then, because we just walked and walked and walked, amen. And, and you would say little things like, do you want a Coca-Cola, right? You go by, me. and I desire just to her, just to look at me and smile and just be happy when she sees me. I desire, when I had my boys, that they would be daddy boys, amen. Now, one of them was a mama boy, and that's okay, but the other one, he's a daddy's boy. He's all about daddy right now, and I'm so excited. Now, that can change today. But right now, he's all about that. He's all about me. I desire. So I try to give them what they need. I try to play with them. I try to love on them. I try to, I try to do everything I possibly can so I can be their desire because they're my desire. Do you realize that you are God's desire? That's right. You know how I know that? He did everything he possibly could so you could be a part of his life. He first created you. We should just thank God for that. Amen. God didn't have to create you. Oh, Lord. He didn't have to create you. He created you. Not only created you, he made you in his own image, which is great and awesome. That means he fell in love about you, that he put his spirit inside you, created you in his image, so you would look like him. Listen, isn't it great to know that God wants you to look like the Father, like, like, like him, wants you to make sure when you go out to this world, people see him, not you, see how great he is, not how great you are. That's how I know God has a desire in you. But then he sent his son so you could have everlasting life. Praise God. He sent his son to die on the cross. He desires you, church. But do you desire him? Do you desire a closer walk with him? Because, church, if we're not desiring, you know how I know somebody's desiring it when it's not an obligation to come to church? I'll look at you. No, Some people think church is an obligation. Well, I better go because they'll call me or they'll do this or they'll do that. I better go. You know, when you have a desire to get closer to God, you don't have to be begged to come to church. You, you don't have to be begged to pray. And bad things don't ha have to happen in your life before you pray. 
Amen. If you have desire for God, you just have a lifestyle of prayer. You have a lifestyle of worship. I love the word worship. You'll hear more about worship coming up. Man, God is just amazing. I told you last week what God is doing in my mind and what it is doing in my life. And God has set a new vision on this church, and I'm super excited about it. But one of those things is talking about worship, and, that, and I, I think we need to understand what worship truly is. It's not about a song. It's not about an atmosphere. It's about you giving your best to the one that created you. Amen. Some of us don't want to give 110% at church. And I'm not talking about money. I'm just talking about your life. We'll just keep going. <laughs> Simon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. He had such a desire for God. He had a, such a desire to see Jesus that he knew after he saw this, after he saw the Son of God, that his life was complete. You realize if you have a desire for God and you feel him, you understand there's nothing else left Amen. but God. There's nothing else left. I used to love how you go see. The first time I found somebody, I was super excited. I didn't care about finding anybody else as long as I found one person. Because you know what? That was my desire. I didn't want to be the person that's just walking around where everybody else is hiding. Amen. When I found them, I would tag them. I'd be so excited. I'd be yelling. I'd forget about everybody else. I'd say, oh, I got you. I got you. You realize God is seeking your heart like that? He wants to find you. But are you doing enough for him to see you? Are you doing enough for him to say, God, I need you now in my heart like I've never needed you before. I need a change inside of me. I have a desire to follow Jesus. I have a desire to walk with him. I have a desire to follow his commandments. You want to change people? Amen. You want to see people change? Let them get a desire to follow God. I can get up here all day long and tell you what's right and what's wrong. But until you get a desire to follow the one that is right, you always do wrong. Amen. You've got to have that desire inside of you. <laughs> it reminds me of Luke 23, or 24 and 32. There was two disciples walking down the road and they asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? Why he talked with us on this road and opened the scriptures to us. You see, these two disciples had seen that Jesus was dead and they went to the tomb and he's not there anymore. And Jesus comes behind them and they don't notice who he is and he begins to talk to them. But as he begins to talk to them, their heart begins to be set on fire for him. Their heart begins to burn with inside of them. Their heart begins to change. Their heart realized that there was something else bigger than what they are. And they understood that now this, this man, this man that didn't know who they were talking to. It was setting them on fire. And when he left, they noticed when they were out of the presence of God that their heart had been set on fire by the one true God. Church, do you have a desire? Do you have a desire? Look at the second one. Go ahead and go to the next one. We need a heart to pursue him. It's one thing to have a desire, but it's another thing to pursue. Amen. I had a desire for Sister Sherry, I wanted her to see me. I wanted her to be excited when she saw me. But then I had to pursue her. You know what I meant? I had to get some, some highlights in my hair. Amen. And I had to get some designer jeans. Amen. And a button-up shirt. Amen. And I had to get some money from my mama because I couldn't get a job yet. Amen. Because I knew I had to take her out to eat. I had to pursue her. Sometimes I had to give her flowers, even if they were dandelions. I gave her flowers sometimes. I had to give her all that she needed, candy, whatever she needed, because I had to pursue her. You listen, church, some of you need to start pursuing God. How do you pursue God? You get into the word of God. You start worshiping God. You start uh, praying, praising God. You start seeking after God. That's what pursuing God is all about. You go out and try to do the things that God has called you to do. We need to start pursuing the Holy Spirit. Church, we wonder why our churches are not shouting anymore. We wonder why our churches are not filled with the Holy Ghost anymore. You know the reason why? Because we stop pursuing them. We would rather sit on a pew and have somebody talk to us about the Spirit instead of us getting up and doing what the Spirit is calling us. Yeah. Church, this is, church is not about you just taking. This church is about you giving. And that's giving the life to Him. So 
You know, I love it. The Israelites were out in the desert. You know what they did? They told, they told Moses he needs to go up the mountain. He's the, listen, you know what's so great about when Jesus came? Moses don't have to come. You can go up the mountain. Praise God. Some of you think the only person that can shout is the pastor. Some of you think the only person that can heal somebody is the pastor. Some of you think the only person that can pray is the pastor. Some of you think the only person that can read the Bible is the pastor. Some of you think the only person that can testify or witness to people is the pastor. No, church, you can go up the mountain yourself. Jesus is there. He, put, he bridged the gap. He got in the middle. So now you don't need a priest to go to God. All you got to do is just give your heart to him. see a church on fire, you see a church that's pursuing God. Right. Every person in the church right. pursuing God. Right. No matter your age, Amen. you're never too old not to pursue God. Right. 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 You're never too young, right. amen, right. Right. To, to pursue God. All you have to do is open up your hearts like we've seen some do this morning that say, God, I can't make it anymore. I'm broken. I'm at the last call. I'm in the valley, and I don't feel like there's no way up. And God says, open your heart and pursue me, and I will lift my hand down and pick you back up the mountain. Just as I picked Peter up when he began to sink, I will pick you up and make sure that you feel the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Start pursuing God. Amen. Start pursuing God. You see, I love it. It says the Holy Spirit got a hold of Simon. You know what he did? He went into the temple. There was no sign that said, Jesus is going to be here today. Right? I thought about sometimes just putting that on our billboard out there. Jesus will be at church Sunday. <laughs> he will be here between the hours of 1045 and 12 o'clock. Because you know we like to put limits on. Hey, that's a whole different method. Hey, he will be here and he will be in our worship. He will lead the music this morning and he will give us a message. And I wonder how many people show up. You know what? We treat Jesus like Santa Claus. Yes, that's right. Amen. We go and sit on his lap and tell him what we want and just thank him for giving us. And then when he gives us a candy cane, even though he has something bigger and better in store with us, we get all upset because we don't get what we want. But God says, listen, stop coming and sitting in my lap. Stop coming and help me do the work. Pursue me. Walk through the valleys. Walk through the fire. Get into that temple that I've called you to and ask God just to move him out in your life. And I've got greater things in store. to bless you, but just pursue it. Just pursue it. shouldn't be what God has done for you. It should be what God's done through you. Because when God does something through you, it not only affects you, it affects the others around you. It affects the people that you come in contact with. I know you're going through a valley, but praise be to God, he's doing something through you, baby. You ain't dead yet, amen. You haven't been buried yet. You might be on life support, but praise be to God, he's doing something through you. If you would just pursue him and seek after him, he has a plan and a purpose, and it's to reach people far from Christ, and so that you will understand it's not about you, it's about the glory of God. have a desire for him, but pursue him. Which leads us to the last thing. Merry Christmas. It is a great Christmas. Christmas. After we have a desire for him, after we pursue him, then we'll have a sense that his presence is here. I think there's too many times in the church that we, we, we seek after him, we pursue him, but we don't allow the presence of God to show up because we don't sense him. Amen. Some of you get that in a minute. Some of you have a desire when we get done with here, you will go get something good to eat. Amen. <coughs> we we going to go to um, Casa Pizza or, or Burger King or something like that. You'll smell the food, right? you got a desire for it because you're hungry. You smell it, so you pursue, pursue it and you get there. But what if you got there and you never asked for the food? Because you didn't sense it was there. 
you know what, some of us, the Spirit of God is right here. We're not sensing it. You know what, we're not letting go to it because we're not letting go to it. God's not moving. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> There's times in your life you might be walking through these streets and the presence of God might get a hold of you and because you're not pursuing it, because you don't desire it and you can't sense it, then God can't use you. That's right. Because you don't understand what God's doing. If we seek after him, if we have a desire for him, if we pursue him and we keep seeking him, he will give us a sense when he's here. I love it. I didn't even put this down, but this is going to be a fourth one. You know what? I love what this guy did. You know what he did? He said, let me hold him. Could you imagine you were Mary or Joseph? You know that you have the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in your arms. And some stranger comes up to you and lets me say, he ain't got no germ gel, amen. He ain't clean his hands. He just said, let me see your baby. You know what we would do? We'd knock him out. Some of you need to grab a hold of Jesus and hold on, amen. Some of you don't only need to sense where Jesus is. You need to start grabbing at him, amen. You need to start holding on to him. I love it. When he got him into his arms, he looked down, he realized he was blessed, and he said, listen, my life is complete now. I have a song of praise in my life. I have a song of joy in my life. I have a, listen, I, I, can, I can have all the money in the world. I can be kings. I can, I can be all this, but it doesn't matter right now because I got a hold of the presence of God. I got a hold of Jesus in my heart. I don't only have a desire for it. I don't only pursue it. I didn't only sense it. I grabbed a hold of it and said, God, I'm not letting it go in here. I got Jesus in my heart, and I'm going to continue to move. I'm going to continue to seek. Listen, our worship would be better if we would just hold on to Jesus. Our praise would be better if we would just hold on to Jesus. We would be able to walk a little higher, a little stronger, if we would just hold the hold of Jesus and he said my life is complete. My life is complete. Listen, I, I, I can see Mary and Joseph they're probably prying him out of, out of the hands of Simon because you know what? Simon realized he had a hold of the Son of God. He had a hold of now we don't hear nothing else about this gentleman but I can imagine he went home and he told his wife guess what I did today? I held the Messiah I held the yeah. Son of God. Yeah. I held the, yeah. the one that came to yeah. save. Yeah. The one that came to restore Israel. Amen. Yeah. The one that came to, to, to restore the Gentiles. Amen. Yeah. The one that's going to change this world. Yeah. The one that's got down deep in my heart. The one that nobody ever talked about. But the Spirit of God laid it on me to go after him. Yeah. He went and told his family. He went and told his friends. My life is complete yeah. because now I to see the Son of God. Yes. Hallelujah. And it changed his life for us. <laughs> I can probably see him now. He probably kept every newspaper clip and there was of Jesus. He probably listened to every story there was of Jesus. And he would tell them, you might have heard it, but I held it. <laughs> you might have saw the miracle, but I held the miracle. <laughs> You might have felt the miracle, but I had him in my grasp. Yes, amen. I seen him before he was he was even having miracles. You followed him because of the blessing. I followed him before he was even birthed. Amen. I followed him to see how great he was because I knew how great he was. I followed him to the temple when nobody else got there. Amen. I went to the show and that's on my bucket list. We said a bucket list song. His bucket list was just to hold the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, the great I am. Your bucket list should be, I just want to be in the presence of God no matter what I do, no matter how far I go. I want to be with Jesus. I don't know how old he was, but if he lived those 33 years when Jesus died on the cross, I can imagine he was probably there. Because he understood what I once held 33 years ago has now came to the field. He understood that his life was now complete because he had Jesus. 
There was no greater thing to mark off his bucket list than to be with Jesus. Are you with Jesus? We can talk a big game all day long. We can sing. Freedom is here. We can sing. Healing is here. We can sing. Victory is mine. We can sing. Give what you give and give it in Jesus' name. We can say a lot of things. We can preach till we blue in the face. We can have nice buildings. We can redo buildings. We can build buildings. We can have all this stuff. But if we are never holding on to the presence of God, then what are we doing, church? That's right. That's right. Seek after. Seek after. I'm excited about 2018, but I understand in 2017, we still got time to see. Amen. I'm excited about Christmas. I, I love telling people about Christmas. But you know what? I understand. I can seek him now because it ain't just about Christmas. It's about him dying and then coming back to life and then sending his Holy Spirit down to give me power so I can continue to do his work. All I got to do is hold on. Hold on to God. Hold on to him. Allow his presence to fall on us. This morning I ask you, are you holding on to Jesus? Are you seeking after his presence? Are you seeking after the Holy Spirit? Do you have a desire for him? Are you pursuing him? And are you allowing him to give you the sense that he's here? Because church, he is here. Amen. I love him. He is the same God of yesterday yes, that he is today. That's right. He will be the same God tomorrow. Amen. He will be the same God 20, 30, 40 years. But when he comes back, well, he's still the same God. Praise God. You know what you need to do? You need to grab a hold of him now. Let him fulfill your life. Let him change your life. <coughs> Let's go to prayer, Lord. I just thank you for this day.